Hi, I'm Daria and I'm a stool donor. Poo is something that many of us are embarrassed to talk about, but ultimately we all do it. I think people should consider more uh, donating uh, more and donating more frequently uh, to help patients and to help the uh, research and science. The human gut has hundreds of trillions of bacteria and other microbes like viruses and fungi. To put that number into context, it's the number of grains of sand on an entire beach in every person's gut. Collectively, these microbes are known as the microbiota and it's vital to keeping us healthy. Unfortunately, the microbiota can become disrupted as a result of things like prescribed treatments such as antibiotics. We call this dysbiosis. Dysbiosis can often correct itself, but sometimes people need a bit of a helping hand and one way to do that is with a treatment called Fecal Microbiota Transplantation, or FMT. This is the process of taking stool from healthy donors, processing it in the laboratory into a drug, and then administering it as a treatment. I first became interested in FMT in 2017. I was helping to look after a patient with a nasty infection with a bug called C. difficile, or C. diff for short. This was a condition that was developed as a result of previous antibiotics and a disrupted microbiota. They hadn't responded to conventional treatments, so we looked into FMT. They received an infusion into the large bowel and they were cured. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Here at Guy's and St Thomas's, we're now able to offer a capsule form of FMT, which is even more acceptable to patients. To make the FMT capsules, we first start with a donated stool. We need to take some of this away for testing to make sure there's nothing harmful in it that we could pass on to our patients. With the remainder, we add this to salt water or saline to dilute it and then blend it together in a shaker. With this slurry, we then filter it to remove large bits of undigested food before then doing centrifugation to remove some of the smaller bits. Finally, we spin it at a high speed to pellet the microbiota, which is what we use to make the treatment. We add a sugar solution of something called triolose to the microbiota to protect it from the cold. We then put it into the deep freeze. Once we have the results back and make sure that there's nothing harmful to our patients in it, we then put it through a process called lyophilization or freeze drying. This removes about 90% of the water. We're left with a powder, which we can then break up and put into capsules. Once the capsules have been filled, they go into the container, they're labeled so we know exactly where they came from, back into the freezer, and then they're ready for our next patient. I was admitted to St. Thomas's with a recurrent infection, and it was called C. diff and I had been given treatment for it in the way of antibiotics and probiotics and nothing seemed to work. I was very scared of leaving home because I needed to use the toilet very frequently. Whilst I was in hospital, Dr Merrick came to, to see me and explained about a process called FMT and he asked if I would be interested in, in actually um, going through with it. So he explained the process to me and I, I agreed absolutely because nothing else had worked. Taking the capsules seemed at first to me a little difficult because I'm not good at swallowing pills and capsules but much to my surprise it's fine, they slid down very easily. They were odourless, tasteless, and there was no reason to think it was somebody else's poo I was, I was swallowing. It was just a treatment for me, FMT. I recovered very quickly um, after completion of the treatment, and it's changed my life completely. I can eat and drink, anything I want to now without having to worry about going to the loo every five minutes and I'm just so grateful to Dr Merrick and his team 
for even suggesting this treatment to me, the FMT. I'd recommend it to anybody. There is hope that FMT may be able to help patients suffering from other conditions. One of these is antibiotic resistance. This is becoming such a big problem that the World Health Organization has declared it one of the top 10 threats to public health. The Ferraro trial at Guy's and St. Thomas's hospitals is looking at whether giving FMT to patients colonized with antibiotic resistant bacteria is an achievable treatment. We're involved in a number of other research studies looking at FMT as a treatment for liver disease, for inflammatory arthritis, and for neurodegenerative conditions such as motor neurone disease. Now, we just simply couldn't do any of this work if it wasn't for our patients and of course, our healthy donors. We simply could not make FMT without our stool donors and their uh, altruistic donations. Um, and that actually brings me as to why I'm on my bike today. During uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the mass lockdowns, we started to collect donations from our donors' homes. And the reason for this was to keep the program going whilst not making our donors feel they were putting themselves at undue risk by coming to the hospital or taking public transport. Then we realised all of our donors are busy people, they have other commitments and we should be trying to do everything we can to support their altruism and if that means going to their home or collecting a donation from their work or um, from a train station uh, in the morning uh, then you know so be it it's not just about cycling around uh, around London hi I'm Phoebe and I'm a stool donor I find it rewarding to know that a simple physiological function could actually help a patient. I have an avid interest in gut bacteria and I believe that this may one day help myself too. Hi, I'm Henry, I'm a stool donor. Donation is really simple. I pick up a kit, follow the instructions and then usually drop it off at the hospital. I've been interested for a while in the gut microbiome and the effect that it has on physical and mental health. So I'm delighted to be able to donate to help research into this and also hopefully improve the quality of life for patients who have chronic long-standing conditions. Hi, I'm Tiana and I'm a stool donor. Um, when I became a stool donor, I became really aware that like with any medical donation, it's really important that the diversity of the donors reflects the diversity of the people receiving the donations. I decided to become a stool donor because I'm not doing anything with my stool, so I'd be more than happy for other people to benefit from it. We're extremely grateful to all of our donors. If you're an adult, age 60 or under, living in London, uh, in good health, taking no regular medications, then you too could become a stool donor. And we'd love you to get in touch.